What's up everybody and welcome to the channel. So in today's video, we are gonna go over probably the top seven best and newest manual transmission sports cars that you can buy in today's market. These are kind of the first seven that pop up in my mind and cars that I'm a really big fan of and I think all of them have quite a lot to offer. So this list is not gonna be in any particular order from most favorite to least favorite, just kind of how I'm saying it. However, we are gonna start off with the Toyota Supra, mainly because it took Toyota four model years to finally throw in a manual. We all wanted one from day one. All the other cars on the list have had manuals for a long time. So with that said, the 2023 Toyota Supra with a manual transmission, you can get that car starting around $53,000 up to around $60,000. So it's at the top end of our price point. We're really gonna talk about cars 30 grand to around $65,000. So with the three liter Toyota Supra manual, you're gonna get that three liter inline six cylinder, has a single turbocharger pumping out 382 horsepower with 368 pound feet of torque. Now the pros to the Supra, it is a fast car. That B58 motor is insanely robust. It is very reliable. You can push seven, 800 horsepower out of it and the engine is rock solid. It handles amazing. It is such a blast to drive that car. Handling is just so spot on, one of the best handling cars out there. And with the power to back it up, it is a very high-end car for honestly, I think a really good price. On top of that, it has refinements. When you're in the interior, it feels like something special. It feels like something that's expensive. Now, as far as the cons, the biggest con is probably gonna be the fact that it's kind of a cramped car. It's a little small in the interior. There's not really all too much cargo space. You have a trunk, little tiny door pockets, and a glove box. That's about all you get. So it's on the smaller side. Visibility is not the best. It's a little tight when you're looking over your left and right shoulder. And the only other downfall, which is kind of subjective, is the fact that the Toyota Supra is actually built by BMW. So Toyota and BMW partner together to build the new Supra in the newest Z4 and kind of put their heads together to build it. However, it is built in Europe, built by BMW. It's got a BMW engine. All the hard parts are BMW. Now, a lot of people don't like that because it's not a Japanese JDM car anymore. However, in my personal opinion, I think that's why that car is so good. It has that amazing M car engine, that amazing power, that amazing handling, that amazing refinements. However, because Toyota was there the entire time with the refinements and developments, they're the reason why it's so reliable and such a good car. Moving on to number two, which is of course the Nissan Z. Now this car, you can get it for around $41,000 up to around $55,000. So if you get the fully loaded one, a little bit cheaper than a Supra. If you get the base model for 41 grand, that is a pretty cheap car for 400 horsepower. Has a twin turbo three liter V6, 400 horsepower and 355 pound feet of torque. It actually has a center console with two cup holders. You have space behind the seats, a wider trunk than a Supra, and just a very usable daily drivable sports car. The windows are actually big and it feels a lot bigger on the interior than a Supra to where it's a car you can daily drive all day long, good visibility, and really just enjoy like the GT sports car while still having a very powerful engine. It's a fast car as well. It really does pack a punch and a pretty solid option. Now the cons with the Nissan Z, currently there's only two trim levels, a sport model and a performance model. We're still waiting on the Nismo to get announced. So with that, the performance model is the top of the line car as of right now. The handling isn't the best. You can tell there's a lot of aspects to the performance of that trim level that are kind of missing. The suspension is pretty soft. There's some body roll. It doesn't really have that tight, nimble characteristics that we want in a real sports car. And we know they're just holding out for the Nismo. The Nismo is probably going to have all those aspects. So handling out of the gate, it needs some work. On top of that, being that it is completely built by Nissan, which honestly is a pretty cool pro, the con of that is it's a Nissan on the inside, just a normal interior. It's not a bad interior at all. It's very nice. It's got good tech, got cool colors. However, it feels like a Nissan. You know, the Supra being a BMW feels like a BMW, which is of course an expensive brand. And then the only other con with the car is the fact that there's not all too much character. In the stock form, engine doesn't sound good. The exhaust doesn't sound good. It needs a lot of help. And again, you know, they're gonna be holding out on the Nismo. So if you really want a character full handling tight Z, the Nismo is gonna be the one you're gonna to wanna to wait for. But at the current moment, Nissan Z Performance or base model is a pretty sweet option, especially with 400 horsepower. Number three on the list is of course the Ford Mustang, the all new 2024 model year. This one pricing is probably gonna be similar to the past, maybe 40,000 up to $55,000. 
it's gonna have the five liter naturally aspirated eight cylinder motor, that Coyote V8 that a lot of people really, really love. And it looks like it's gonna range from 480 to 500 horsepower, which is quite a lot from a naturally aspirated engine. Torque is looking like it's gonna be 418 pound feet of torque. So the pros with the new Mustang, of course, is the V8. It's a true American muscle car. In this country, we love that. It is fast. I mean, even the normal GT Mustang we're used to now, it's a pretty peppy car. It gets up to speed. It sounds amazing. It's a muscle car. So that is a really big pro. It's also a very practical car. You have back seats, a trunk. You can use a Mustang all the time, year round. It's got good tech. It's gonna just be a very well-rounded vehicle. Now the cons with the Mustang, it's quite a bit heavier than two-seater cars, of course. So the handling isn't going to be the best. Not to say it won't handle very well. Of course, when you opt it, maybe get a dark horse, you know, magnetic suspension, whatever options they're gonna have, it'll handle really well for what it is. However, being a bigger car, it's never gonna be as pinpointy as smaller cars. So if you're really into the twisty turns, the Mustang might quite not be the car for you. Only other cons are currently Mustangs are honestly a dime a dozen. There's so many of them out. I see them every single day. So it's not all too of a special looking or special rare car because you see them quite frequently. It doesn't take the fact away that it's a nice car and very cool to drive. However, they're very common. So yours isn't going to exactly stand out in a crowd, but it might hit that crowd. Next car on the list is the all new BMW M2. I've always been a fan of the M2 cars. The M3 back in the early days, the 90s, early 2000s, that was their kind of halo car, fun, nimble sports car. However, over the years, the M3 has got a little heavy, a little big, and a lot of people haven't been the biggest fan with that. So when the M2 came around, that was that small, fun M car again. And I think it has got increasingly more and more popular. Now the new M2, you're looking at maybe up to $65,000. So that car is gonna have a three liter inline six cylinder with two turbochargers under the hood. And it also pumps out 453 horsepower with 406 pound feet of torque. That is going to be one fast car. I've never driven the newest M2. However, I've driven the M2 competition from before and the original M2 as well. And I really can't complain with any of them. They are fantastic. They're also extremely practical, just like the Mustang. You got back seats and a trunk. It's a normal car that you can use every single day. Being a BMW, you have that really nice refined interior, all the technology you could ever want, a lot of options as well, and it is just gonna be a really good package. I am excited, and one day I definitely wanna get one of them when I need back seats again. That is a special car. Now, the only real downfall I can find with that car as of now is the fact that to get the carbon fiber bucket seats, you gotta opt for the $10,000 carbon package, which gives you insane bucket seats, carbon fiber roof, and a few more goodies here and there. So that is a very expensive option. I would not spec it with that just because if I'm gonna buy that, 65 grand is about all I'd wanna pay for it. However, I really don't see any drawbacks with the new M2. I think it is a rock solid choice, and I really am looking forward to the day I can drive the new one. That is gonna be awesome. Next up on the list is the only four-door car in this group, which is the all-new Honda Civic Type R. Now, normally I would never put a four-door front-wheel drive sedan type car in this list of fun sports cars, but the Type R is something that has really stood out. I've driven the older model Type R and I was completely impressed and it flipped my mindset of what I thought that car was gonna be. So the Type R, you're looking at that around $45,000. So kind of a pretty average price point on the vehicle. This one does have a two liter four cylinder engine with a turbocharger pumping out 315 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque. Now the pros with the new Honda Civic Type R are definitely gonna be the fact that it is insanely practical. It's a four door hatchback at the end of the day. It has so much room for four people at least, stuff in the trunk, cargo area all over the place. Judging by the previous Type R's, handling is amazing. I never thought a front wheel drive car would handle that well but from what I've seen with the new one, it's even better. So it is so good in the turns, just a fun, fun car to drive. And being a Honda, we know it's gonna be bulletproof reliable. This is probably the most reliable car on this list where you could easily go 200,000 miles and not have any issues. Now the only drawbacks is front wheel drive. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of it. However, it is probably the best front wheel drive car out there and it doesn't feel like a front wheel drive car. So depending on your own taste, that may not be a downside. However, I think it would be cool if it was an all-wheel drive car. Only other downsides are the fact that it's not the fastest when you compare it to the other cars on the list. It's peppy, it's quick. Of course, you can tune it and make like 400 horsepower out of it. However, if you're gonna race them all, 
you're gonna get a little bit more acceleration in the other cars. So not to say it's a slow car, it's just not the fastest thing out there. But overall, Type R is a solid choice and the manual from the old one was amazing. I'm sure the transmission on the new one is just as notchy and fun to drive. With that said, moving on to the next car, another Toyota, which is the Toyota GR86. Now this is another Toyota that wasn't even built by Toyota. Of course, this is kind of the same car as the Subaru BRZ, which is built all by Subaru. So the GR86 built by Subaru, this car is around $30,000. So honestly, the cheapest car on this list, it is rear wheel drive, which is a really cool aspect. And you're gonna find a 2.4 liter four cylinder boxer motor. Now the new GR86 is now pumping out 228 horsepower with 184 pound feet of torque. The pros with this car, it handles so good. We took this car at the tail of the dragon. It is so tossable. Put it in track mode with traction control off. You can get the tail end out. It's so easy to recover, so easy to drive. It is just so easy to have an absolute blast. I was so thrilled driving that in the mountains. And that was even an automatic. I can't imagine how much better the manual is in the mountains but it is just a fun, fun car to take turns with. It's actually pretty practical. It does have back seats, not exactly designed for humans above five feet tall, I would say. However, you can put people back there or use it for storage and actually use it like a normal car. Now the downfalls with the GR86, it is really small. While it does have that extra space in the back, when you're in it, you feel like you're in kind of a small car. So if you don't like tight places or little cars, this might not be the car for you. Interior tech, I don't think is all too good. Even when you get a touchscreen on it, it doesn't really do all too much. So the tech is kind of basic. It's nothing fancy. The interior is not refined. It's just a fun, affordable, fun to drive car. And the last con is that it is pretty slow. Zero to 60 is like seven something seconds. Uh, don't try to race anybody in a GR86. It is a pretty slow car, but honestly, it really doesn't take away from the fun factor. Just don't do any drag racing. If you're in the turns, that's where the car shines and you're gonna keep up with faster cars in the turns because it handles so well. Moving now to the final car. I could not make this video without it. The Mazda Miata. It is kind of a legendary manual sports car. The fan base is huge. People love them. This is actually also one of the cheapest cars on this list. You're looking at around 30 to $40,000. So you have a pretty good price range to get just a basic one or get nicer technology in it. Now this one is gonna have a two liter inline four cylinder engine with 181 horsepower and 151 pound feet of torque. Now the biggest pro with the Miata is the fact that it's a convertible. You can get a retractable hardtop or a retractable soft top and the top down experience on a sunny day throwing through the gears in the mountains is something else. It is purely a fun car to drive. We drove one of them at the Tail of the Dragon and it was just smiles for days. So much fun to drive. Handling is insane. It's such a tiny little car. You can just do anything. My friend has one and I can't shake him in my 700 horsepower GTR. The Miata is just too much fun. Downfalls with this car for sure, it is tiny. And I say tiny, it is teeny tiny. There is no space on the interior. Uh, sitting in the passenger seat, I felt a little cramped. It is just tiny. The trunk is also tiny and good for maybe two small backpacks. It is very, very small. So if you need to put anything other than just a backpack or two, you need to look elsewhere. On top of that, like the GR86, just a basic little four cylinder, it's pretty slow, similar to zero to 60 time. So again, don't try to race anybody in a straight line. The Miata is not at all designed for straight line acceleration. And if you're getting on the highway, it's not exactly all too impressive. This car is just about fun, top down, taking turns. That is all what the Miata is about. So there are my favorite seven manual transmission sports cars. Some of these aren't exactly the newest. Obviously the Miata has been around for quite some time. GRD6, a few years old, manual Supra, the new Dark Horse, things like that are all brand new. So it's cool to see that we still have manuals. It's been years of people saying manuals are dying, but honestly, there are some really, really good options coming. And I'm excited to buy quite a few of these on the list and really feature them and enjoy them and make a lot of content on them. But comment below, did I miss any cars? What are your top manual cars that are in a pretty reasonable budget? Comment below and I'd love to hear your thoughts. But with all that said, hope you all enjoyed today's video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you all in the next video. Yeah.